Greetings to all of my educated magic friends out there on YouTube. I am Jeff Kowalk, your host here on Erudite Magic. As most of you already know, this channel is all about magic books. So if that's your thing, we're delighted that you're here to join us. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke about the top magic book publishers out there. And one of the names that you heard on that list was The Miracle Factory. They have put out a number of beautiful books about different people in magic. The Miracle Factory books typically cover one person, but they cover it in such depth that you'll know almost everything that's ever been in print about that person. They've tackled historic luminaries such as Anaman, Al Baker, Cardini, and so many more. The subject of today's video, however, is far more contemporary. And in fact, while so many of the Miracle Factory books are about magicians who have passed, Thankfully, the magician that we're going to talk about today in these books is still with us. We are talking about France's very own national treasure, Gaetan Bloom and Full Bloom, the books. So what are these books? They are hardcover books produced in the typical Miracle Factory style, that is to say, a mostly black cover with some beautiful artwork that represents something about the artist that it's talking about. Volume one has approximately 400 pages, while volume two clocks in around 330 for a total of approximately 730 pages. Yes, you heard me correctly that this is two books and you have to buy them as a set. As far as I know, they are not sold individually anywhere. Let's pause for a moment and talk about a little bit of the history behind these books. I was attending Abbott's a few months ago and Kevin James was there lecturing and he talked about these books and his interaction with Gaetan Bloom. Apparently, it was Kevin James' idea to approach Todd Carr and commission him to create these books. The set was published in 2013, which means that today they're becoming harder and harder to find, but more on that in a bit. Anyway, Kevin James loves Gaetan Bloom and his magic and thought that the magic world deserved the opportunity to see the amazing mind behind one of France's best and most creative magicians. As I've alluded to several times here, Gaetan Bloom, for those who don't know, is a French magician, but he has performed around the world. He made a name for himself by performing at the Crazy Horse in Paris, although he has performed on TV for Juan Tamari's magic programs, as well as a number of other places across the US and around the world. It's quite difficult to pinpoint exactly what style of magic he performs because he does a cabaret act, but so much of this book can be done cabaret or stand up, parlor settings. There's even some items that I think would play for a larger stage and certainly plenty of close up material as well. In short, there's something for everyone's taste. And what kind of taste is it, you might ask? It's a completely zany set of magic. What I mean by that is Gaetan Bloom thinks differently than a lot of magicians when he's contemplating methods and presentations to his magic. There are lots of really offbeat items in this book. It would be impossible for me to go through and give you trick by trick recommendations because there's so much material in here and likely your tastes will vary from mine. However, I did have the opportunity at Magi Fest last week to sit down with Don from Don's Magic and Books to ask him about some of his favorite tricks. So I will intersperse some of those clips throughout this video to help you see what some really cool effects are and where you might find them in the book should you happen to pick them up. But to give you an example of some of the craziness that you have here, Gaetan gives you a card stab type routine done with a costume store hook that one could buy to complete a pirate's outfit. There's a little story that goes along with it with some gags and funny bits of business. But in the end, the performer ends up stabbing a participant's card with the hook that's on his hand, just to give you a little flavor of what you can find in this book. Another example is a screen that's set up on stage and the performer is wearing a shirt with a tie and has some participants initial the shirt with the Sharpie. Yes, you have them draw on you. And when the performer walks behind the screen, a shirt is tossed up from behind the screen. The performer comes back around the front to catch the shirt and show that they are still wearing a tie with a jacket, 
but they no longer have the shirt on because it's there in their hand with the initials. They drape the shirt back over the screen, walk behind the screen, and come back around the other side wearing the initialed shirt once again. Perhaps one of the most interesting thing about these books are the methods that Gaetan Bloom has found to deploy for the magic. If you talk to people who own the book and have read through the methods, there are so many very satisfying methods that you just think that is genius. Good methods don't necessarily make for good magic, but you can rest assured knowing that all of the magic in here plays for real audiences because these are audience tested pieces that Gaetan has performed, whether on TV or for live audiences around the world. So where did all this material come from? The beauty of the Miracle Factory presentation, which you'll typically find, is that the books are compilations of everything that the subject has put together. So it starts off with some of his lecture notes that he published early in his career. It goes on to some of the booklets and tricks that he published. It gives you commercially released items as well as some previously unpublished items. I can't say that it 100% encapsulates everything that Gaetan Bloom put out before 2013, but it certainly has almost all of it. So what kind of performers interested in books like this, you might ask, as I've mentioned, whether you're a close-up, parlor, or stage performer, I think if you value magic history, especially contemporary magic history, different ways of thinking about magic tricks, these are some absolutely gorgeous books to pick up. And even if you're just a collector and you like to read about interesting secrets, these are the types of books that you will enjoy. Most of the descriptions and explanations are fairly concise. There's plenty there to help you understand what you need to do, but there aren't wasted words with bragging about how great this is or how it fooled the boys or anything like that. You're getting the effect, the method, and potentially what inspired Gaetan to create this piece or the original intended audience. In addition to the tricks, there are also some essays and tons and tons and tons of photographs of Gaetan from when he was a child and learning magic, as well as photos of him with the crazy horse dancers in places around the world. The beginning of the book opens with a bit about how this book came into print and what it meant to Gaetan and Kevin James. And I certainly think that you'll enjoy reading about the history of a book like this because it's just so massive in its scope. This is way more than just your typical book of card tricks. If you flip open to any page, really any, you're likely to see a wide variety of props from eggs to trays to spoons to clothing items. There are items with matchboxes and keys and ropes. There's mentalism and sight gags and levitations and transpositions. There's something for everyone, really. There are items with bells, rubber bands, money, both coin and paper, bottles, newspapers, mentalism, you name it, it's there. I don't wanna drone on too long about this, so let's take a break here and hear what Don has to say about some of the tricks that he found valuable. Well, the book, honestly, is just filled with stuff. And even if you never perform anything that's in here, if you wanna learn creativity or what a very creative person, how they work, these are the books. I'll just give you a few of them. If you know ring flight, where you borrow a finger ring from someone, it vanishes and appears in your key ring. A lot of them have reels and all these contraptions. Gaetan Blooms doesn't. You take the ring, drop it in your hand like that, it's gone. Hands empty, you reach into your back pocket, take out your keys, open up the flap, bloop, and there's their ring hanging on there. It's that simple, you unhook it, and it's instantly reset again. It's so simple. It's something you can buy, at one time I think through Vernet Magic, or Vernet Magic, Say it how you want. But it teaches you in this book how simple it is. And I don't know what kind of hint I can give you, but it's just so simple. It's so good. Another real favorite. He calls it the invisible watch or the anything watch. You take your empty wrist, you draw a little watch on there, and you just draw the numbers or dots. You don't even have to do that much. And any time during the show, you can look down at your, your wrist there and know exactly what time it is by the exact moment. It's it's just super creative. I, I go back to these books all the time. If I was deserted on an island, this is one of the two sets of books I would take. The other one that he's released, I believe, through Penguin Magic, the standing card where he has two cards on the table. He flips them over, shows they're not connected, stands one up, it stands there. He stands it sideways, stands it this way. At the end, he tears the card in half and stands the half of the card up and anyone can reach out and take those cards at any time. It, it's so, so easy. But the way he's got it routine and the way he performs it is really amazing. Give you one more here. One of the things he released in a fairly limited number, I believe it's called, pronounced Corte. 
because he has four, it's a little chalkboard, has newspaper across the front blocking some sort of prediction. He asks you, what number? Uh, four, okay, he clips four onto the board. What another number, you choose one. He basically clips four digits across the top of this board. He pulls the newspaper away on the bottom and they're written on the chalkboard in chalk are the matching numbers. Well, it's something you used to be able to buy and if you can find one, they're still fairly expensive. He teaches you in the book how to make it. I mean, and you can make it and it's, it's stunning, it's very cool. One more example real quick of one of my favorite ones. For those that know the, the routine where you have a tray and some glasses and some eggs and you knock the tray out and the eggs fall in, he takes it from a stunt to a magic illusion. He, he does the stunt first, then he builds it back up with two cups and the eggs. Then he has someone take a playing card, put it back in the deck seriously, and they shuffle it. He balances on top of a, a post above the third glass. When he knocks the tray out, the eggs fall into the glass, the deck scatters, but one card dropped into the middle cup, back towards the audience, he asks them their card, turns the cup around, there's their card. How do you think of these things? I don't know. But anyone that can produce card fans while wearing boxing gloves, if you've ever seen that video, you know this guy is, is kind of crooked up here, but crooked in a good way. He's just super creative. Those are some of my favorites. If you're wanting to buy this book, it's like I said, it is becoming harder and harder to find because it's been in print for a while and Miracle Factory books are not as common as they are when they're first released. If you want this, I know that Don has a few copies in stock. So if something that's interesting to you, you're going to want to check it out with him. In fact, let's hear from Don about this week's code, which I think you'll find particularly relevant if you're interested in this book. All right, let's make it easy to remember. It's Bloom, B-L-O-O-M, and just in case, all right? And it's a two book set, and it usually sells for 150. This week, if you use the code Bloom, I'll give you 10% off if you order the set for me. And I will pay for shipping within the US. Anyone else just pays for actual shipping. 10% good enough, you think, Jeff? You know, I mean, that's very generous of you, Don, but I, I, I wonder if you could do a little better. Uh, could, could, could we do 12% maybe? Would that be okay? Maybe more? I don't know. Could you do one more? Uh, 13? Maybe just, just a little bit. 14%? Okay, okay. 15% off, all right? It's, it's, it's as good as I can do, but 15% off the set, and I will pay for shipping completely insured anywhere in the U.S. if you want to order it. Code BLOOM, B-L-O-O-M. It's either going to be here or here or here. Jeff will point again. He'll tell you. Wow. Can you believe that Don is offering 15% off this book? I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to find a better deal than 15% off these two beautiful books. So if it's something that you've thought about or you've wanted to explore a Miracle Factory book, this is the week to do it with 15% off at Don's. I just want you to know that as a Miracle Factory release, it is in my top five. They're absolutely gorgeous, well done, black and white photos throughout. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of tricks all waiting for you to explore them and put your own stamp on them in your performances. That's what I've got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed the review of Gayton Bloom, Full Bloom by The Miracle Factory. Until next time, all my erudite friends, keep reading.